Okay, so now let's go and talk about the extrema. So again, when we're talking about the extrema, we're looking for the absolute values of a function, the absolute maximum or absolute minimum, as well as the relative uh, maximums, um, where it's just gonna be the maximum or minimum values on a given interval. And so what we're gonna do is we have some equations, which is not gonna be very apparent where these extrema uh, show up. So therefore, I provided you with a link uh, to go ahead and follow, or you can just type in each of these functions into a graphing technology and go ahead and see for yourself. So, <laughs> excuse me. So probably I provided the first one up here. And as we go and plot this, we can see that the graph is kind of increasing to it kind of has this little sharp turn. And then it kind of takes the shape of like a parabola, you know, kind of afterwards. And as we kind of zoom out, we can see that the graph does not have an absolute maximum or a minimum, right? This graph continues going down and continues going up. And again, sometimes it's helpful like to continue zooming out um, just to make sure that that's gonna be exactly what the end behavior is doing. So we know there's not gonna be an absolute max or an absolute min, but what we do wanna do is, again, understand why these are what we call relative max and relative mins. And again, the reason is, is when we zoom in, as we zoom into this function, okay, you can see on a given interval, let's just say, you know, between negative 1.1 and negative 0.9, this value, this point, negative one zero, is the maximum between any two intervals of x values. Because if I pick a point to the left of that, the y value is negative. If I pick a point to the right, the y value is negative. They're all, each and every point to the left and to the right is gonna be less than negative one comma zero. But since it's not the absolute maximum, it's the relative min, because relative to the screen that we're looking at, that is going to be a maximum value. The same thinking and definition applies over here for it being the minimum value. So negative, um, negative 0.5 is the minimum value here. And you can see that any point to the left and to the right is going to be greater than negative 0.5. So therefore, it's a relative min. And again, it's not the absolute min because as we zoom out from this relative look, we see that the graph actually goes down below. So I'll show you guys a couple different ways that we are uh, going to, you know, write this out. Um, so you, therefore, you can kind of see. All right, now I did write these down on a little note card just so I'd kind of like remember uh, what exactly their points were. But we do know we have a couple things going on. We have a relative max. So I'll just write in, let's zoom in. Ahead. So I'll say we have a relative max. And for the first example, I'm just going to say, where does this relative max, you know, where's the location? Where does it occur? And that occurs at x equals. So in this case, um, I'm using the x value. And again, how I'm going to write the answer is really dependent on what the type of question is. Um, what information are they asking? So sometimes they're looking for like the location, sometimes the value, or sometimes the point is going to be the most efficient way to write the answer. Uh, so the relative max occurs um, at x equals, let's see, that was at x equals negative 1. And there is a relative min at x equals negative 0.5, okay? And actually, negative 0 0.5. All right, so now let's go ahead and get into the next example here. So looking at this next example. Uh-oh, where'd the graph go? There it is. All right, so on this next example here, you can see the graph is continually going down in both directions. Uh, we see we have like an absolute maximum point. You can see the graph is bounded above, right? So it doesn't go above the y value of 3.688. Um, then we kind of have this interesting little curve here that's going on. So we want to see like, does it kind of make sense for it to be a max or a min? And as you look, as you go to the left, the graph goes up. And as we go to the right, the graph goes down. So therefore it doesn't fit our definition of a local extrema being the, um, doesn't fit our definition of our local extrema as far as being the, uh, you know, the max or the min. So what we can do here then is we can say that this value occurs, you know, at, uh, or at least the, the, the absolute max occurs at this coordinate point or the y value or the x value, whatever it is. And that's really it. That's our only extrema here. So um, the next way that we can write, I don't know what I'm doing here. The next way that we can write the extrema, just say, you know, what the point is. We say we have a absolute maximum. Oops. At, now I knew I was going to forget this point, so I'm going to, I wrote it down. So again, that's at negative 1.5, comma, 3.688. 
Okay, so now that's including not only the location like we did over here, but also the Y value. And um, then let's go ahead and take a look at the last example, which will basically be um, there you go. So now we go ahead and take a look at this and we see that, all right, it looks like we have a maximum value here, right? But again, as we kind of like zoom in, you can see that this is not the absolute maximum. That's going to be the relative. And then we kind of have two low points. Now it's kind of interesting here because this one you could say, all right, that's the absolute minimum points. And here's like an absolute minimum points. Um, now, is it possible for a graph to have more than one absolute max and absolute min? And the answer is yes. As long as they have the same y values, it is, it is okay. Um, another kind of quick distinction is endpoints can be absolute um, maxes and mins because that's the definition of an absolute max and mins, that it's you know, the highest or the lowest value of a function. However, endpoints cannot be like relative maxes or mins. So it's something we get more into calculus, but just kind of a quick little note here. However, in this example, I am actually just going to provide the, the y values. Um, so you could provide both of these points and say, hey, you have an absolute minimum at negative 2, 0, as well as 0, comma 0. But I'm not going to worry about including that. I'm just going to talk about what are these you know, y values. Because some of the questions might say, you know, what is, what is the extreme? What, are, what is the absolute or relative maxes and mins? So we can say we have a relative max. Now, not at. I'm going to use of because now I'm looking at what is the y value of this maximum value. And that one was one point, so I'm gonna say y equals 1.619. So again, it's just important I'm using, again, all three of these answers really depend on what, how the question is being asked. I just want you to kind of see how I'm using them uh, to, or using the information differently, just kind of based on the question. But since, here I'm just talking about the y value, so I'm going to say I have a relative maximum value of y equals this, and I can say that I have an absolute minimum value of y equals zero. Okay, so again, you could have I could have written them of the coordinate points. Just make sure you use the at, or I could use the location as the at. And again, it really just kind of depends on you know how the question is being asked and what exactly you're looking to uh, achieve there. So there you go.